So for my demonstration, um, I got my own little template. Uh, it's a eight inch ring for eight inch speakers. Um, what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna do two eights, two tweeters, put the tweeters in the middle, eight right here, eight on the other side. So the very first thing I do, I measure from one side to the other side. I measure that. And then after that, I measure from the highest point that I'm going to the bottom point that I'm going. You know what I'm saying? And I just, you know, make a, a rectangle, a rectangle of what I'm using out the whole door panel. I'm going to put it on a piece of cardboard. Once I measure that and put it on a piece of cardboard, I cut the cardboard out. All right, now you got your cardboard piece out. Um, when you cut it, don't worry about the lines being straight because once you put it on the MDF, uh, you're gonna do like a little connected dot thing. That's how I do it. Long as you got, long as you got a precise cut around the corners, you okay. So as far as line going straight across and stuff like that, don't worry about it. You'll be all right. All right, now what you wanna do, you wanna go back to your door panel. Now all door panels are not made the same. You got some that are round, you got some that are square, you got some that got curves in it. So what I mean by that, what I did, I put my template down. Um, as you can see, like this square part of the template, it overlaps this part right here. I'm not going past this part, cause this where the, this where the dashboard goes at. You know what I'm saying? You can't go right there because you ain't going to be able to close the door, of course. So, I'm going to have to cut that out. Same way with this. On the arm wrist, on these Impalas, they slope down. The door panel angle up at the top, but on the arm wrist, it slopes down. So, as you can see, it's sloping down into it. So, what I'm going to do, I already made a marker. I already made a marker where I can know where to draw my line at from here. To down here up under the um up under the armrest i'm gonna make sure i keep it up under the armrest same way down here um i don't want it squared so i'm gonna cut it off like at an angle right here same way right here i'm gonna need to cut it off right here So that's what I mean by doing your cutouts. Make sure you do your cutouts, man. You don't want to make no mistakes on building your door panels because once you start glassing and stuff, ain't no turning back. Make sure you do your cutouts. And once you do your cutouts, you go ahead and cut it out. Put it on the door panel, make sure everything's straight. My bad, y'all. I thought I hit record, but you get the point. So I did my cutouts. Everything look even. Down, back to crawl. That's what I mean by your layout, man. Now, if you want to, I do it sometimes. 
Sometimes I don't, but if you want to, you want to go ahead and put your speakers in, you know, put your speaker ring in, trace it out, make sure everything fit. But I done did these so many times, I already know how it's going to come out. So just the layout right here, this is what we running with. Let's go on to the next part. All right, here go one of the easy parts of the dough pounder build. Um, basically masking it to make the base part. Uh, I use paint and tape. They got stronger paint and tape than this. If you're familiar with this kind, but it all it all works the same. It don't matter. Just make sure you use paint and tape because you use anything stronger than paint and tape, it's gonna mess up the door panel. And you're gonna leave a lot of adhesive on the door. Um, make sure you wipe down the areas, or you can just dust off. You know whatever fits for you. Just make sure it's clean. Don't use any chemicals because if you use any chemicals, it's gonna take a while to dry, and it's not gonna stick. So just make sure you clean it up real good. Uh, wherever areas you working at and when you mask just make sure you overlap you overlap all the areas that you're doing overlap if you want to if you want to mask the whole door panel it's fine you know just to be safe i don't see a lot of people mask wherever areas they work in, and then they cover it with like trash bags or whatever so they won't mess it up but you know if you got good hands or whatever you ain't got nothing to worry about all you got to do is just overlap because sometimes you can drip some resin or whatever and then it might get on the door panel now plastic door panels like stuff like this you can peel it off when you do the resin but um like leather and stuff uh i don't know i ain't never done it i can't tell you but just make sure you overlap when you masking always overlap i'm gonna show you how i do it Alright, so once you done masking it, this is what it should look like. Now I forgot to tell you something before you start masking. Um when you mask it, just make sure you get every every detail, corner, whatever. If it's if it's like in the middle, it don't matter. But far as the edge and stuff, like up in here, around here, make sure you get all the edges right. Make sure you get it right. Cause if you don't, what will happen when you start putting the pod together, you're gonna have gaps in between the door panel and the pod. And you don't want your stuff to start doing that. So, and make sure you do that. Just what it should look like. Let's move on to the next part. Okay, now, this is why I started masking before I started putting the template on the wood and started cutting the wood out. So, Basically, you want to go ahead and start doing your little line, your little guide line. This is basically like a guide on what line you want to draw to cut out your base part for the pod. What I mean by that, for example, when I make my pods, I want my I want my base part to be further out than the template. I want it to be like flush down, like a little angle flush down. I don't like to be straight all the way around. I don't know why, it just don't look good to me. But I want to be out further a little bit. And what I do, I just draw a line all the way around to what I'm gonna cut out for the base. All the way around. Let me show you what I'm talking about.
So this is what I mean by using your template as a guide to draw your line. Now, when you glass it down, you don't have to worry about the line because once you start glassing, it's going to go through it and you still going to be able to see your line when you start to cut it out. But that's how you do it right here. Or well, this how I do it. Now, if you mess up, it's okay. You can still, you know, just remember where your line's at. Cause see like right here, I messed up. I didn't go up right here and come around. I went at an angle, but I'm gonna fix that. But yeah, this how you do it right here. Now let's go on to the next part. All right, now we at the part where a lot of people been in my DMs about, uh, which is glass in the base. Um, First thing first, uh, you can get this out of Walmart, Home Depot. Uh, same thing with fiberglass resin. Now, with the mat, make sure you get the stringy kind. Make sure it's stringy. Don't get the actual mat kind, because that's the wrong kind to use. But um, you can get this on Amazon, too. I done bought some on Amazon before. It's a big roll, a real big roll. It's been a while since I bought it, but... I just been going to the stores and buying this instead because it's quicker, it's convenient. I ain't got to wait on it for it to come in. Um, so what we about to do, we about to glass the base so it can harden up so we can have a hard base. Um, but the very first thing you want to do, you want to take this out. It's going to be folded in the sections. And what you want to do, you want to break it apart into long strokes. And I'm going to show you why. So let's go ahead and handle that. All right, I got my strips, y'all. Now, the reason I tell y'all to tear them down from where it's folded at to make one long strip, uh, it's self-explanatory. So, when you go from here all the way to here, you don't wanna just use patches of it. You know, one patch right here, start dabbing down. One patch right here, start dabbing down. You don't wanna keep doing that. Just take one long strip, put it across it, and then just go to work. Go to work, that's all you gotta do. Now, if you wanna do one, one, one patch at a time, you know what I'm saying? It's fine, whatever makes you comfortable, but I'm just giving you, you know, a little easier process to get it done. So let's go on to the next part. All right, here we go. Here go the resin part. Um, I use a measuring cup. Why? Because I don't know how to use this resin stuff accurate like most people do. They be eyeballing it, especially when you're doing pods. I don't, I don't know how they do it. I can't do it, but... Um, I'd rather use a measuring cup so I can make sure everything's right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure everything's accurate. So you can get these out of Home Depot, Walmart, uh, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree. I'm in the South. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you know, you know. So with this, this resin stuff, um, it's all about ounces. So it's it's very it's very easy. Each ounce equals ten drops. So you see the four ounces, 40 drops. It's that simple, right? Cause see, the more you use, the quicker it'll dry up. So keep that in mind, but I always use eight ounces. Um, when it comes to the hardener, oh shit, my bad, y'all. Still got stuck. All right, so when it comes to the hardener, when you open it up, mine's already open, but when you open it up, you have to punch a hole in it. Now listen carefully. Use only a needle or a push pin, something that small. If you use anything bigger than that, your drops are going to be too much. When you use too much drops or you too much hardener, it dries up real fast, real fast. So make sure when you punch a hole in it, use a push pin or a needle. I always use a push pin because that's what I be having around me, but use a push pin or a needle. Now, when you come down putting your layers down, first thing I do, I go ahead and mix me up some resin. My little line right here, all on the inside of it, on the inside of the line, I just smear down some resin. 
on right here. I don't do too much, I just do enough. So when I put my mat down, it'll stick to it, it won't move no more. And once you put your mat down, once you put your layer down, whatever layer you wanna lay down first, you can start top, side, bottom, whatever. I always start from the bottom and wait on my way up. When I start from the bottom, right here, my first layer, and just start tacking it down, start tacking it down. Once I start tacking it down, um, I make sure all the air bubbles going out of it. See on the edge, you just wanna make sure it's flush down. You don't want no air bubbles. Now, how many layers? Uh, I do two layers on top, and then, and later on in the process of doing the door panels, like after I put the pod together, I do another layer. Like whatever I have left from the mat and stuff, um, I use that, but we'll get into that later. But let's go ahead and get to work. All right, so I got my two layers down pack. Um, this is basically what it should look like once you get done. Just let it dry once it, you know once it's done. Uh, if it's like in normal heat, you know, outside conditions like summertime, or if it's like room temperature, it'll dry in like an hour. But if it's cold, uh, I say like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, not too much more I can say about it. You know, just make sure you get all your air bubbles out. Make sure you get all your corners tacked down right. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's about it, really. As far as the middle, you don't really have to worry about the middle because, you know, that's getting cut out anyway. So, um, that's about it as far as the uh, base part, putting resin on that. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next part. While you waiting on your glass to dry, um, here come the fun part. This is what you can do to bypass time. Uh, you can go ahead and start putting your template on the MDF. By the way, um, I use MDF sheets, half inch thick most of the time. Um, you can get it out of Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, I mainly go to Home Depot, of course. You can use plywood, but the only time I use plywood is when you only doing like, uh, what can I say? Um, like speaker boxes or, or if you doing a door panel with no with no screen covers, cause see this one, I'm about to do screen covers. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. But um, yeah, the reason I use MDF is because you can get sharper cuts, you know, better cut lines and stuff like that, et cetera. You get better results basically. But don't get it wet. That's all I'm gonna tell you. 
you get it wet, it's gonna swell up. All right, now, your most common door panels you see all the time, you either see some with screen covers or you see some without screen covers. Um, with this one, I'm doing screen covers. The way I'ma lay it out, I'ma show you, but in the midst of showing you, I'ma show you how to do it without screen covers at the same time. Cause doing it without the screen covers is less work, but I'ma do it with screen covers too. So the first thing you wanna do when it comes to screen covers, put your template down on the MDF. Draw your dots all the way around in the corner on the template. Once you get done doing your dots, you connect the dots with a ruler or whatever you're using. I'm about to do the exact same thing. Once I get done, I'm gonna let y'all know what's up after that. All right, so this is what I mean by connect the dots. All the way around, real simple. Now, when it comes to making your, when it comes to making your design for your screen, um, you just gotta get creative sometimes. Uh, you know, you can either go to a print shop, print some stuff out, you know what I'm saying? Just to make your designs on the inside, but you always wanna make you a, like, like a little rim around it. Even if you ain't putting nothing in the middle, you always still wanna make you a rim just to make the screen, to make the screen is what it is. For example, uh, the space between, from the outside of the screen to the inside of the screen, I always use an inch, I always use an inch. If I'm doing something like in the trunk or something, uh, I use like two inches maybe or an inch and a half, but when I'm doing door panels, I always use an inch. Now, uh, all you gotta do, same way, connect the dots. For example, Line it up. Line it up. Inch here on one end, inch here on the other end. Do your dots. Once you're done, you already know. Connect your dot going across. Same way, all the way around. All the way around. If you don't get what I'm saying, let me go ahead and show y'all. All right, here you go, y'all. So this is what I did. Once again, on one side of the ruler, I drew my dot right here. On the other side of the ruler, I drew my dot right here. And just connect it. That what made my space right here for the screen. All you gotta do is do it all the way around. All the way around your whole template. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up. And I'm gonna let y'all know what's next. All right, y'all, now it's looking like a screen. I got an inch space all the way around. That's how I made my screen. Um, now, this a heads up. This part right here, um, I always recommend on all my builds. Um, what I do on my corners, even on the inside, I always round them off. 
I always round them off. The reason I round them off for for one, I'm always wrapping my bills. I don't paint. I don't never paint. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not gonna paint, but we'll get to that one day. But I'm always wrapping my bills. And the reason I always round them off when it comes to wrapping is because you don't wanna use sharp you don't wanna use sharp corners and then punch a hole in it or you know it'll mess up the material because right? you stretching the material, you know what I'm saying? So you always want to round it off. Now, when you painting, um, I never done it before, but I'm sure it's not going to hurt anything. But even if I was painting, I'll probably still round it off just to play it safe. Just because when doing pods, of course, you using fleece and you stretching. So um, I'm going to go ahead and round these off and show you how I get that done. But before I do, how I round my stuff off, Either I use a washer or I use a bottle cap from a, I use a bottle cap from a bottle. Um, You can use bigger bottle caps, but I always use this size because it's more convenient. The only time I use like a bigger bottle cap, like they come off milk cartons or something like that, is like when I'm doing like, like, like the trunk bill, um, bigger projects. But when it comes to door panels, I just use this or a smaller washer. You know what I'm saying? Or you can use like a, um, what size is this? I think like a penny or a nickel. You can use that size, but I'm always drinking water. So these always come in handy. But I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about. All right, y'all, so I did all the corners. I rounded off all the corners, inside and out. Inside and out. Real simple. Real simple, that's all you gotta do. Now, for those who are not doing no screen covers, all you gotta do is just do the inside. And once you get done, just go ahead and trace out your, uh, trace out your rings for your speakers or whatever, wherever you wanna go. Now, for the people that's making the screens, now, when you're doing your design, uh, you can just get creative, but always remember, don't do no, don't mess up and do no freehand design and have it not attached to the to the outer rim of the, of, the, of the screen, you know what I'm saying? So, you gotta make sure it's always connected somewhere on the screen, on the outer rim of the screen. Um, now, the design I'm gonna do for this one, uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna do another connected dot type of, you know whatever you want to call it uh but when you're doing your design it's all about you know it's all about creativity it's all in your head so i can't really tell nobody how to do their designs and their screens or whatever but um i'm gonna do a little connect the dot just to throw it in here just to give y'all a couple ideas you know what i'm saying so when i get done with that i'm gonna show y'all what's up okay y'all my bad i had left some stuff out all right um before you do your screens um I wanna tell you something. All right, I'm gonna put it like this. Remember earlier I said I'm gonna do two eights, two tweeters. Uh, I'm not really doing that. I'm really doing three eights and one tweeter. Now, this part right here is basically uh, explaining about, you can always rearrange some stuff. So what I was really gonna do, like an eight right here. Well, what I was explaining, an eight right here and an eight all the way over here and two tweeters in the middle. I still had some space, but I was gonna rearrange to do three eights and a tweeter. An eight, 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 and put the tweeter up here. Now, when you're doing your design, no matter what design you do, do whatever design you want, but just don't block your tweeters. Don't block your tweeters, and don't block the full range of your mid bass. You always wanna have open space, because if you do, you're not gonna get the sound that you want. But for the main part, don't block your tweeters. So, I mean, if you got a lot of tweeters and just a little bit of mid bass and you blocking most of your mid bass, it might can be fine, but just don't block your speakers. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't block your speakers because you ain't gonna like the sound. So, what you wanna do, what you wanna do, you wanna do like a little soft trace. Do like a little soft, don't do no hard line. Do like a soft trace of your speakers, where they gonna go. 
then do your design for you then do your design for your screen so i'm finna just go ahead and demonstrate that just to show y'all what i'm talking about All right, y'all, now check this out. Remember, I said I'm gonna put the Twitter right here. Now, I also said you can rearrange some stuff. I had some extra space, so I can put an extra Twitter right here. And that's what I did, so three eights, two tweeters. I don't know if y'all can see the lines for the eights, but they in there. I ain't wanna make it too visible, cause I still gotta make the screen. I still gotta make the design for the screen, so let's go ahead and get that out the way. All right, so now I got my screen design. So y'all seen I did connect the dots again. I used the same thing, used the same way. Uh, I round off my edges and everything too. Um, what I also do, I go ahead and erase all the all the extra lines that I don't need, cause I don't want to, you know, mess up when I'm cutting the cutting the wood out or whatever. So if it helps, go ahead and you know start erasing that. everything it look like a screen now so this is basically how i do my screens y'all basically how i do it i'm just gonna head on to the next part all right now this is the part where you start cutting first thing first get your jigsaw and get your drill and get you some sandpaper either get your 60 grit or 80 grit uh 120 grit might do it but I really recommend 60 or 80. And I'm gonna show you why you need sandpaper later on. But when you're doing door panels without a screen, without a screen cover, all you have to do where your, where your circle's at for your speakers and stuff, um, just drill a hole in it. Drill a hole in it big enough for your jigsaw to get through and cut the, cut the rings out, you know what I'm saying? Um, same thing with the screens. On the inside of the screen, you drill your hole. All your holes, drill it, so you can just all can get through and you cut out the holes. And then after you do that, then you cut out around it. The reason you cut on the inside, because if you cut out on the outside first and then cut on the inside, you might have a chance of messing up your board. So make sure you cut out, cut on the outside first. I mean, cut on the inside first, my bad. Make sure you cut on the inside first and then cut, then work your way on the outside. Um, Ain't too much to say about this part. So let's go ahead and get to work. I'm gonna show you when it's done.
All right, got the screen cut out, y'all. Looking pretty good. Now, what I want to say is, um, the reason I cut it like this, I give it like an eighth or a sixteenth space from the line when I cut it. It's like a guideline to me, cause see, usually when I cut it on the line, it come out looking crooked a little bit, or it might have some divots in it, you know, not straight enough to me. So I use this as a guideline when I'm cutting. I seen a lot of people use templates, but I ain't got no templates. What I mean by templates, like they'll put it on the router table so their lines can be super straight, but it's straight enough for me. Now, when it comes to the sandpaper, I check my corners and the lines all the way around. Cause sometimes you can have, you still have lumps when you're cutting it. No matter how straight you cut it, you still have lumps in it. And you want to get them lumps out, you want to sand it down. Uh, the reason I say sand it down because I be putting like grooves and stuff on my screens. And like when you put it on the router, you can still you can still see it. Like you can actually see it more. And you don't want to wrap you don't want to wrap the screen and then you know it's visible. You know you want to make it as good as possible, as clean as possible. So this it right here. I'ma uh, go ahead and use my sandpaper. Go ahead and get the grooves out, get the lumps out, and I'ma get that with y'all. All right, got everything looking good now. Now the people that's doing dough panels without the screens, just hold on for a second. This for the people that's doing dough panel with screens. Now, once you done cutting, sanding and all that good stuff on the screen, it's time to put it together with the board that you put your speakers in. It's real simple. All you gotta do is get another piece of MDF, slap it down, trace around your screen. Just the outside, only the outside, just trace around it. Just trace around it, make a hard line. Once you're done, once you're done, move it out of the way. Get your speaker ring, get your speaker range, your templates, whatever. Draw a hard line around them, whatever you putting in your door panels. And once you're done with that, you cut it out. You cut the holes out for your ring. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate and get back with you. All right, y'all, I got my circles drawn out for the speakers, for the holes, but before I start cutting it out, um, if you just using the box circles, uh, it's kind of cool, but I'd rather use templates, like I made my own, because when it comes to stuff like this, I can draw the outline first, and I know how much space I need to put between the next speaker and this one, so, you know, you won't be touching nothing. So when you put the speakers in, they won't be touching each other or they won't be in the way. So just draw a line on the outside first and then draw the circle and then work your way around it. But let's go ahead and cut these circles out and I'm gonna get you to the next part.
All right, got my holes cut out for the speakers. Now don't be no fool, y'all. Make sure your speakers fit. Trust me, make sure they fit, cause for example, I had DS18 before and I switched to PRV. The PRV couldn't fit in the holes that I cut out for the DS18. Boom, there it is. So don't be no fool, y'all. Make sure everything fit. Now, what we finna do next is put the screens together. Put the screens together with the board. Now, it's two ways you can do it. I'm gonna tell y'all the first way. The first way is, before I had a router, um, what I did was, this is where the line come in at. When I had drew the line around it, I cut out, I cut it out, and then I put it together with the screen. I put it together with the screen, and then I just sand all the edges all the way around to make it to make it even. But at the same time, I hated doing that because you gotta be real careful when you do it because you don't want to make no, 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 you know the side parts of it. You don't want to make it round. You know what I'm saying? So just be careful when you do it like that. Now, with the router, this is how I do it. So basically all you gotta do is get you some double-sided tape. Matter of fact, I be getting this kind from Home Depot or Walmart. Um, get you some indoor double-sided tape. Do not get outdoor, cause outdoor is too strong. And when you peel it off, it's gonna peel off some of the some of the grain off the off the MDF. So Make sure you get some indoor. Um, get some indoor double-sided tape. Place it on the screen. Place it on the back of the screen, my bad, I'm sorry. Place it on the back of the screen. Once you place it on the back, the back of the screen, line it up with your lines all the way around. Now how I do it, I stand it up and get the corners. Get the corners to line up, I stand it up like that. And then I press down. I don't do it like this because somehow it's gonna come out crooked regardless. So just line it up right here, stand it up just like that. Get the corner lined up and press down. Let me go ahead and show y'all what I'm talking about. All right, now tap the screen down. And I picked it up nice and strong. Ain't gonna come apart. Now it's time to head over to the router. All right, y'all, here we are. My famous old router table. Um, I'm sure some of y'all seen the video of me building it. If you haven't, go back and check it out. But what we finna do, we finna go ahead and route up these pieces right quick. Um, about the router, it's self-explanatory, you know, it's your bearing right here that spins. It go on the top part of the piece. Basically, it go right here. The bearing go on the side right here. And the red part that cuts go at the bottom. That's only if your router is standing upside down. Now, if you're doing it by hand, vice versa, you have to flip the board. Now, I don't recommend that just simply because 
you can have a chance of moving the board and you might mess it up. So, uh, just build your router table, man. Trust me. Go go buy one. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as the bits, uh, I got this flush trim bit from Home Depot because it was a quick get because the one I got from this kit right here went out on me. But the kit's pretty good. It's just you get what you pay for. I got my kit off of Amazon. I think I got it for like $25 to $30. I can't remember. It was a minute ago. But, um, uh, yeah, just get you a router table, man. It's, it's, it's better. That's all I'm going to say. It's way better. And you get the job done quickly. I really ain't got much to say about it. Um, it's self-explanatory. So, uh, let's go ahead and get it cut up. And I'm gonna get back with y'all. So once y'all get done using the router table, that's what you're looking at. All you gotta do is get you a flathead screwdriver, put it in one of the creases, take it off, take it apart. All right, now I done took it apart. Now it's to the point where I want to do some details in the in the screen. You know, you don't have to if you don't want to, but you know, the more details you do, the better it look. Um, I got this chamfer bit right here that came in the set that I got. Uh, most people run with it, or they might run with the round with the round edges, but you know, this the most common right here. It makes it look good. Um, ain't too much to say about it because it worked just the same as the as the flush trim bit so um all you gotta do is just switch the bit out do the exact same thing but when you do it of course turn the screen upside down now i'm gonna tell y'all something before you start doing this before you start you know putting your edges on this doing your little details or whatever keep this in mind you got a whole nother door panel to do. All you have to do is repeat the same process. Go get your MDF piece, put this on it, put you some double-sided tape on it, place it down, drill holes, you know, and put it on the router table. It's that same thing with this tool. That's what this, that's what this is made for. So just get you another piece of MDF for both pieces and duplicate it on the router table. But with that said, let's go ahead and put these details in the screen. Here it is, y'all. The main face of the dope panel. Just how I do it. 
You remember I was talking about them lumps? I got one right here, right here, right here. All you gotta do, sand them down, and put it back on the router. That's all you gotta do. But the next part, we're gonna be assembling the, uh, the pod together. But I'm gonna do that in another video, cause I don't wanna make this video too long, so. If y'all think this video was helpful, man, just leave a like, man, and make sure y'all share it too. I appreciate those who watching, and don't forget, please don't forget, the giveaway is still going on. I already got a lot of people that are in it, so if you miss out, that's on you, man. But I appreciate y'all watching, man, and I'll catch you on the next one.